Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about deep backcountry comms. Now, in the past, I've done one, one or two, not enough, videos on group communication using handheld radios. And I think that's very important. And I think that uh, choosing which frequency bands you're going to use, which ones will require licenses, and, and answering these questions will be very important for you. Using FRS radios, GMRS radios, ham radios are all very useful uh, when it comes to handheld communication. And it keeps communication easy and open between you and your party. Now, deep backcountry communication is going to be easily accomplished within your group with the radios like this. But when you need to communicate out into the world, you need to consider other alternatives and how your handhelds are going to work with the rest of the communication infrastructure that are out there. Um, now, some of you might be thinking about GPS communicators or things like the Spot or the Garmin InReach. Um, I'm not really going to touch on that, but I do want to, people to consider that those are extremely useful in an emergency situation in the deep backcountry. So it might be something to add to your gear. Anyway... Moving into the next level of radio communication, repeaters are a fascinating thing. And repeaters allow us to communicate vast distances with the use of, of, of signal repeating. And you need to consider that. So anyway, let's look at this. Some questions I really want you to think about is where's your camp and how will you communicate out into the world? Uh, what type of radio gear can you bring? Can you bring an HF radio? Can you bring an antenna? If you can bring an antenna, how much power can it take? What frequencies will it operate on? And from your camp, can you reach a VHF or a UHF repeater? That will determine whether you need an HF radio. And then if you are in the deep, deep backcountry, an HF radio would probably benefit you. And knowing how to use that before you get out there is going to be critical. So some of these deep mountain situations where communication is really, there's not a lot of infrastructure as far as cell phones. We just know that cell phones are built around cities and interstates. We also know that the backcountry does not have cell phone repeaters and you're lucky to get a signal. So if you can get to the top of a mountain, you can communicate with some repeaters that are very far away. And if you're carrying a proper antenna, a directional Yagi, for instance, you will be able to communicate some vast distances, communicate to a repeater, and get word out that things are going okay. So what you really need to consider is in these deeper situations, an HF radio that allows you to communicate NVIS. And this diagram shows a little bit of that. Your signal goes up to the ionosphere and bounces back down to Earth. And depending on your antenna configuration, you can communicate closer to you geographically. So instead of you know, several thousand miles, you're communicating uh, a couple hundred miles away, which may be all you need. But the chances of you doing that with a handheld UHF VHF radio are very slim. So you do want to consider other options or alternatives. When we're out there in the backcountry, we're out there to recreate and to have a good time, to see things, to experience the peace and the quiet, and I encourage all of us to do that. But I want you to think about a few things. Example one is folks, they're getting coffee downtown and they lose their mind if their cell phone dies. How are you going to react when your communication system isn't in place and you need it in the backcountry where cell phones don't even work? What communication plan do you have? So if you need to communicate out, you need to consider your options. Can you access these repeaters? Will HF radios work for you? Do you need to consider NVIS antenna configuration and for those of us who have experimented with it, that can be tricky. I love it, but you really need to figure it out. Otherwise, you're going to skip over the region you're trying to communicate into. Now, setting up HF radios is a bit different than just pulling out a handheld radio from your pocket and talking on it. 
An HF radio requires you to set up an antenna, requires you to have a, a stable place to operate for the most part, especially if you're in the backcountry in the winter at night, it is extremely cold. So having a shelter, a hut, or a cabin where you can light a fire and be somewhat comfortable and be able to operate is going to make sense. Uh, some people will carry a heater. Uh, some people will have a backcountry tent that allows you to fire up a stove. But these are considerations you'll need to make when looking at carrying an HF radio into the field. Many of us do summits on the air, which we operate during the day, and that's a lot of the extent of our HF communication in the backcountry. Taking it overnight and doing uh, communication at night in the deep backcountry is going to be very beneficial, but we need to have experience in setting up our equipment and using it out there. I think most of us need to answer the questions of communication need and why we're going out into the backcountry. And I want you all to think about that. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Backcountry Amateur Radio.